Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown with Bethany. I'm Bethany Braun Silva, and we are in full back to school mode in my household, and I couldn't be more excited. I love spending time with my kids over the summer, but I'm equally as excited to send them back to school. And so that's why I'm so excited to talk to Allison Holker today. She's my guest, and she's going to be taking me through all of her back to school routines, how she manages picky eating, how she stays on top of everything and organized. As you can imagine, it gets pretty hectic in her household, especially during during this time of year as it does in mine, as I'm sure it does in yours. So stay tuned for this fabulous episode with an equally as fabulous mom. I can't wait for you to see it. Hi, Allison. I am so excited to talk to you. This partnership with Shift sounds incredible. I know you have three kids and we are really coming up on the start of the school year. And for, I know in my household, it is gets crazy. I have two kids, you have three and all of very, well, all varying ages. So I'm wondering how you're keeping things together and how you're planning to stay organized and get everything you need in your house for this upcoming school year. Well, first off, it is really crazy being like a working mother. You have your hands in so many different things all of the times. But I think that's what makes us superheroes, right? Is as a mother, whether it's perfectly balanced or not is not the case. It's just that we continue to move forward and make things happen. That's what makes us superheroes. When it comes to back to school, back to school is always a crazy time. I've got a 16-year-old, I've got an 8-year-old and a 4-year-old. But I love the beautiful chaos of everything. Um, but when Shift came to me to be a partner with them, that's why I loved it because Shift has made my life so much easier. I'm always on the go. I'm always at basketball camps. I'm always taking my kids to their school activities. And it just seemed like this summer when I was getting ready for this year, when they reached out, I had never heard of Shift, if I'm completely honest. But when they told me they were same day shipping from so many incredible companies I already order from, I thought it was an amazing escape for me to make my life so much easier, being able to get them ready for school, get all the school supplies, get the back to school books, um, get their backpacks and everything that they need. It made my life so much easier where I feel like I could exist in my chaos, but make our lives so convenient and easy for ourselves at the same time. I love that. And I did see your Instagram stories about with your shift haul and that included not only like backpacks and a lunch pail, but it also included some stuff for yourself. So like, give us an idea of what, you know, parents can, can or, what they can order, how they can use shift to prepare for this up to coming back to school season. Listen, everyone always focus on kids for the back to school, which is so important, right? It's their time. We're supposed to celebrate them and honor them. But sometimes the moms and the dads need just as much attention. So I ordered myself some candles, some bath salts. I want to make sure that I'm a good mom for them. So that means I also have to have like my relaxation treats as well. So I got us some fun things, the important things, but also sometimes and things for us just to have, you know, fun together as a family. So I even got us some games. Of course. And I know a lot of kids like they might my kids are dreading going back to school a little bit, but I do help to help to get them a little bit into the excitement of it by bringing them into the fold of all the stuff we're getting to go back to school. Do your kids feel that as well? I make sure that my kids are very prepped for anything that we're walking into. So we're a couple weeks out from them starting school. So I make sure I sit down with them and talk about the things that are going to be important for them walking into the school year, what things are going to help prepare them, but also kind of what the foundation is going to be between us, um, between the kid and parent. Um, with what I expect of them to get themselves up in the morning, make sure they're getting themselves dressed, getting their own shoes, making sure they're telling me what the teachers say. I mean, they're all in different age categories, but I find the more that I empower my kids, um, the better they feel, but the better we all can feel. Um, because I, I do, I make them pack their own school lunches. I make them pack their own backpacks getting to school. So I find that those things really help us in our household. And did you always do that? Because I'm sort of wishing I had done that from the start to give my kids a little bit of ownership and autonomy in their back to school moments or really just like in their in their lives as it is right now. And, and I and I've been a parenting journalist for a decade and I know that like I know that kids want to have control and it seems like that's something you've really implemented. So was that always sort of the, the routine in your household? 
I would love to say that I've always been doing this. I've always been this great, amazing mother that knew everything, but no, it wasn't like that. Um, my oldest, I definitely was a lot more um, in control of everything and guiding the whole way. And then when you start to have more kids, you see what they can actually obtain and the knowledge they can actually instill in you. So I think you start to have a little bit more of an appreciation for their own personal growth as you have more children. So it was really my second and now into Zaya, my third, that I've implemented a lot more into their independence, into the younger ages. Um, but it was because of the example of my first it was like, did I have to do all that for that long or could she have done it on her own? So um, I think, yeah, but I think it's pretty common across the board for parents. And once you have more children, you start to see that they can engage more and handle a lot more as, um, as you have them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, three, three is a lot. I have, I just have two, so, but I can't imagine three and also vastly different ages. And I'm also really sort of, I always embrace back to school time. I'm in New York city. And so we start a little bit later after labor day, but I really embrace that time. Like you mentioned to kind of like reinvest in self-care, right? We spend our whole summers figuring out activities for our kids, even if they're in camp, what have you, but September comes around for me and I'm like, all right, I need to get like the mental, the physical, everything kind of back on track and so what does that look like for you a little bit some of the things I like to do to get back on track which might not be what you're expecting me to say is I declutter our house mm -hmm. oh it feels so amazing to walk into a new school year with a fresh space fresh eyes fresh things fresh new and every, everything feels like they can have a, a new way of starting over and so I, I've already done that for our home. So it feels very clean and crisp where everyone can have a clean mental state for themselves. So I would say cleaning and getting organized. It I makes them that. see that for their lives and how important it is when they're going to the new school year. And again, I make them do it as well. So it's getting them to understand those kind of important steps for themselves. I love it. I love it so much. And I know when I was offered this interview with you, there was a kind of line about picky eaters. I'm wondering if do you, do you have picky eaters in your household? And if so, how are you managing that? Um, my youngest is a picky eater. My older two are not, but my youngest is such a picky eater. She doesn't want to eat anything it feels like ever. So it's this constant battle. Like, can you just eat? So I know I did a good job as a parent. Um, so I just try to keep an array of snacks um, that she would like while trying to open the gate of throwing other things in. Um, but again, I think the thing that's helped the most is if she helps make her own peanut butter and jelly sandwich, she's going to have more of a chance of eating it rather than I make it for her. So I think getting them involved. Yeah. And I do, I do sort of subscribe to that as well. Like if it's in the house and they can get it themselves, they're more likely to go make those, make those choices on their own. I feel like I'm learning so much from you just from this short, short conversation. And it's inspiring me to kind of like go back and really kind of reinvest in that like independence in my kids um, and, and really have them carry that through the school year. Oh, um, I do you guys do any like back to school traditions? I know we see letter boards and all of that. Do you, is there anything cute that you like to do that for, to, um, you know, acknowledge back to school time with your children? Absolutely. So I don't do it with my youngers quite yet. Um, but something I do with my oldest, she's 16 now. And I always grew up because of my mother as a huge goal writer. So I always write out like my year plan. And then I'll also, you know, vaguely write out a five and 10 year plan. I make my oldest write it out every year. So I'll have her probably do it the next week or two before school starts. Right. And I'm wondering, like, she's sick. It's not, but the thing is, it's not just how can I succeed and be like the CEO or something, or can I be a famous YouTuber or can I be this over here? Or could I be a famous athlete? It's not, none of those things. It's more based off of like your physical, mental, and spiritual health. Write out five goals for yourself that you're going to achieve this year. And when it comes to physical health, like I'm going to drink a gallon of water every day. I'm going to make sure I work out three times a week. I'm going to make sure I wake up on time at whatever time it is you want to wake up. So it's not, it's not looking at the success of who you become, but more what your daily practices are to be the best version of yourself in what I require my kids to do for goal writing. And then I think that becomes your success in business or career or choices or whatever it is you're trying to get into. So I make my daughter do that every year before the school year starts. That's, that's really impressive because I do know it's like you're laying the foundation, right? Right. You're, you're, yeah. 
you have the the long term goal inside, but it's really those daily habits, I think, is what you're saying, right? That make it more attainable and achievable. It sounds like you're nailing this whole motherhood thing, Allison. No, listen, we no, no, we're not nailing it. We are definitely just trying it every single day and surviving and doing the best we can, like anyone really is. You know, um, it's a constant battle, but a battle that I choose to have in my life. You know, so it's not perfect. It's it's sometimes brutal and ugly but it's also the most beautiful thing in my life that I have so I are. couldn't I couldn't agree more and as we're sort of wrapping up I just have to say I think you're just in the hearts of, of America and we're all rooting for you and your beautiful family so thank you so much for your time and here's to a happy and healthy back to school season for you guys same to you thank you so much for talking to me and I send you all the best 